All right, so get this. We're talking about the B2 spirit. The spirit, yeah. That bomber. It's like something out of a movie, right? Stealthy, futuristic looking. Absolutely, yeah. And it was just deployed. First combat mission in years. First time in a while, yeah. But here's the thing. It wasn't just any mission. It targeted Houthi weapon facilities in Yemen. And it's that context that makes this so interesting. Right, like it's Yemen, already a tense region. Then you throw the B-2 into the mix. That's a statement. Oh, absolutely. Deploying the B-2, that sends a message that echoes way beyond just those targets, you know? It's like, why use a hammer when you can use a jackhammer? So why the B-2? What's the big deal with this aircraft? Well, you've got the stealth capabilities, obviously. It can basically disappear. Right, it can sneak past almost anything. Exactly, but then you add the range. It can strike from so far away. Across continents, mm. even. Exactly, and then on top of all that, it can carry an insane payload. Deploying the B-2, it's not just about taking out a target. It's about sending an unmistakable message. Especially in that region, it can't be ignored. Okay, so it's a message, but who's it for? It seems like there are a few different audiences here. You're absolutely right. On the one hand, you've got the Houthis themselves, right? It's a pretty direct warning about those attacks on ships. Right, the civilian ones, the military ones basically uh, cut it out. Exactly. But then you've got Iran, kind of the puppet master in the background, you know. Pulling the strings. Right. And for them, this B-2 deployment, it's a reminder, isn't it? The U.S. can reach out and touch them if they want to. Not so subtle, that's for sure. Not at all. And it's a hint, too, about what could happen if they keep supporting these proxy conflicts. We're watching you, basically. Exactly. But it doesn't stop there, does it? There's a bigger audience here, the whole world, really. Right. It's the U.S. flexing its muscles a bit, showing they're still top dog. In a way, yeah. It's them saying... We'll protect our interests and our allies no matter where. Don't mess with us, essentially. Exactly. And here's the interesting part. This all happens just as the Air Force is about to reveal the B-21 Raider. Talk about timing. The B-2's successor. We were shinier, even stealthier. Is this a coincidence? Are they showing off the B-2 one last time before its replacement takes over? It makes you wonder, right? The B-21, it's a big deal. It's the future of these long-range strikes. It's a huge investment, too. Billions of dollars. Oh, absolutely. And they're planning to build over 100 of them. This is the future of the Air Force, right here. So where does this B-2 deployment fit in? A last hurrah for the old guard or something more strategic? Well, let's talk about that. One thing our source material really emphasized was the analysis by retired Air Force Colonel Mark Gunzinger. He said this B-2 strike, it was a deliberate signal. And I think we need to break that down a bit. He's saying it's not just about blowing stuff up. There's a deeper meaning here. Right, exactly. Gunsinger said this mission, it wasn't just about those targets, it was about projecting power. Making a statement. Exactly. And the message, according to Gunsinger, is pretty clear. We are at an end to our tolerance. Don't test us. <laughs> but why now, though? And why the B-2 specifically? Yeah, it's yeah, like, no. you can say that, sure, but it means a whole lot more when you've got the firepower to back it up. You know, And the B-2 is definitely that. Nobody doubts that. Right, exactly. It's not like they just pull this thing out of the hangar for a casual Tuesday flyby. So let's talk about that. Why use the B-2 now? Why not a B-52? Why not just a bunch of fighter jets? What's the message there? Well, think about it. The B-2, it's not just a bomber. It's a symbol, you know. Of American tech, American power. Exactly. And the stealth on that thing, practically yeah. invisible. Can get in and out of it anywhere. Practically, yeah. And yeah. you could use a B-52. Sure, it's a good bomber, don't get me wrong, but it's a different message. It's like the difference between sending a text and showing up in person. Yeah. Exactly. The B-2, that gets your attention, especially someone like Iran. They notice that. Speaking of attention, we got to talk about the timing here. Yeah, it's pretty wild, right? Yeah. The B-2 is back in action, and the B-21 Raider, its replacement, is about to be unveiled. What's the deal with that? Almost like a swan song, right? The article did mention the Air Force wants over 100 B-21s. That's the future of their long-range game. That's where the money's going, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Big investment, big plans. So where does that leave the B-2? Is this a goodbye tour, a show of force before it's retired? Or is it more about continuity? Like, hey, we've got this new toy, but that doesn't mean we've forgotten about the old one. Yeah, you've got a point there. It might be about the transition, you know? Like the U.S. is saying, we're not replacing, we're adding to, right? It's not just about the B-2 or the B-21. It's bigger than that. It's about staying ahead of the curve, showing that they're still the ones calling the shots. Exactly. And that no matter what, they'll have the technology, the edge, no matter what's happening in the world. We're always a step ahead. But let's talk about the B-21 for a minute. What's so special about it? 
How is it different from the B2? Okay, so imagine the B2, right? Amazing tech, top of the line. Now take that and make it even stealthier. Even harder to detect. Exactly. Longer range, even more precise targeting. We're talking about an aircraft that can basically go anywhere, do what it needs to do, and vanish, all without anyone knowing it was ever there. <laughs> Sounds like something out of a spy movie, honestly. <laughs> but with the B-21 on the horizon, what happens to the B-2? Does it get sent out to pasture? That's the question, isn't it? You'd think, new toy, got to get rid of the old one, right? Thought with the old, in with the new. Right. But it's not that simple, not in the military world. The B-2, it still has some tricks up its sleeve. It's got a track record, people who know how to use it, years of data and experience. You can't just replace that overnight. So it might stick around for a while. It's possible, yeah. Yeah. Certain scenarios, the B-2 might still be the best tool for the job. Even with the B-21 coming online, the B-2 could still have a role to play. So we might see them working together. A little tag team action. Maybe. It's definitely something to consider. It shows how complex all of this is, you know? It's not as easy as just swapping out one plane for another. It makes you think about the bigger picture, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, it really makes you appreciate the kind of planning that goes into all of this. But, you know, sometimes all this talk about bombers and strategy can feel a little, well, abstract. Oh, for sure. Like, it's important stuff, don't get me wrong, but how often do most of us really encounter stealth bombers in our daily lives, yeah, you know? It's easy to feel disconnected from it. Exactly. So, for those of us who aren't like military strategists or diplomats, why should we care about all of this? What's the takeaway here? Because this B-2 thing, it's not just a one-off, you know? It's part of a bigger shift that's happening, a change in how the world works. So it's not just about this one bomber or this one mission. Right. It's about technology, specifically long-range strikes. It's changing uh -huh. everything, how wars are fought, how countries interact, everything. Like the ripple effects. Right. Exactly. Think about it. Being able to hit a target on the other side of the world quickly, quietly, without much risk. That changes the whole game. Makes those targets a lot more vulnerable. And the countries that possess them a lot more powerful. Raises all sorts of questions about deterrence, about what happens when things escalate. It's like those sci-fi movies, you know? Just because we can build these powerful weapons, does that mean we should? Exactly. And those movies, they don't feel so fictional anymore, do they? This stuff is real, it's happening right now. And that's why it matters to everyone, not just the military. Because it affects all of us, even if we don't see it directly. Right. Understanding this technology, the strategies behind it, the risks, that's crucial for anyone who wants to understand the world today. That's a lot to think about, that's for sure. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today, from stealth bombers to international relations. It's been quite a ride. We've been all over the map. So if our listeners could take away just one thing from this deep dive, what would you want it to be? Just this. The world's changing fast, technology is driving a lot of it, and we can't ignore it. Stay informed, keep asking questions, because this stuff matters. Couldn't agree more. A huge thank you to everyone listening. We appreciate you joining us for this deep dive. We'll see you next time.